Hello everyone, welcome to a Jonathan Magatosh video. We're not going to be doing a Twitter video of him just yet, in this video at least. Uh, there will be another Twitter video about Jonathan Magatosh, don't worry, because he tweets a lot. Um, I figured, since I'm going to be covering a video, I want to show you, I want to show you guys how much this guy spams his videos. Uh, everyone, uh, you know, kind of uh, says, oh, DSP, he spams his videos, you know, this is that... Jonathan Magatosh spams far more than Phil. Okay, so March 30th is when he uploads the uh, video. He pinned his initial tweet about it, so it's going to be on the top of the page. So that's one. This is two. Three. Because he also retweets people who tweet about his videos. So, three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Uh, nine, ten, eleven, eleven tweets so far within within like two days of its uploading. It was uploaded the thirtieth or so. I I think it's the thirtieth. Yes, yeah, the thirtieth. So from the thirtieth to the thirty-first, he has done nothing but spam his fucking video. And it gets worse. And again, he, he posts the same video again! And then again, and then again. Look, look how much, how many times does this fucking idiot uh, guy put, uh, post his fucking video? Like, DSP does it at least two times? Maybe three. But this guy goes far beyond. Far fucking beyond. So... When I have to, when I do my uh, let's get lost in uh, uh, Macintosh's tweets, we're gonna go through a lot of this stuff again. I, I mean, just just get excited, guys. Get fucking excited. Uh, now let's get back to the video that he fucking spams. He he does this to every video, by the way. It's not just this video. It's not like oh, I, I'm very proud of this video. He does it every time he uploads a video. That's that's how desperate he is. He's desperate to get views because he actually, honestly, for uh, his kind of content, he gets shit views. He's He's the DSP of SJWs. I'm not even kidding when I say that. Like, he he makes DSP look fucking must. He makes less than DSP on, on uh, Patreon. Let's keep that in mind. He makes less than DSP, and he puts maybe a little bit more effort into his videos than DSP does with his vlogs. But regardless, he makes less than Phil. Let's continue. Let's watch this. Let's get ready to kill ourselves, guys. Wait a second, guys. I I made a mistake. I needed to uh, change the audio channel. <laughs> Thank God I noticed it now than later. You, that happened last time, uh, and it, and it was it was terrible. Uh, I'm gonna do a little test. Yep. Uh, bonus points for anyone who can guess what uh, what album that little clip was from. So now my video might be claimed, but what can I do? Harrison Ford has played some of the most iconic male heroes ever to appear on film. Uh, by the way, don't you love his fucking audio? Like, like you, you're. Pro I might get comments saying, "Oh, can you turn up um, Megatosh's audio?" He's on Max. He has a very shitty fucking recording. Like, I, he his old videos. He changed his format. By the way, he used to be he used to be talk in front of a camera and all that kind of stuff. Now, it's just he plays footage, and he talks over it, and I don't know what happened, because I'm using my built-in microphone in my computer, and it it's a better microphone than what Jonathan McIntosh is using, and I assume he actually bought a microphone, so either he got a shitty-ass fucking microphone, or he's using a rock band microphone. What the fuck? Why does this audio sound so bad? It's it's really bad. It's not even like it's just it's it's kind of it's it's really kind of pathetic. It's 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 the saddest thing I've ever seen, uh, ever heard, I should say. The cultural impact of his filmography is so massive that it's hard to overstate. An entire generation of young boys learn to idealize his cinematic performance of masculinity. These films provided an education of sorts into what it meant to be a man. 
Yeah, okay. Han Solo, Indiana Jones, and Rick. See, so you're already getting the kind of the gist of what Macintosh is approaching with these videos. And it's a common theme with him. Nobody watches these kind of films for educational purposes. No one sits there and is like, oh, this, is mu this must be what it is to be a man or whatever. Like, what he's trying to get at. I mean, there, there is some idea that he's getting at, I, which I can kind of see. But it's the, but, again, this is what I mean, when, when, he used to work with Feminist Frequency, he used to work with, he did some videos on, um, like video games for his tropes, and I can guarantee, I can guarantee, uh, her videos are still pretty shit, sure, but when he was working on them, they were shittier, because the thing is, is that, you can kind of tell when Jonathan Bagtosh wrote an episode of, of, uh, tropes versus video games or whatever, and then when you see, and then when he left, you can see that there was a, a giant uh, leap, because you know with Anita's latest videos, they're not great, but they're at least I, I can at least kind of see where she's coming from. I'm not saying that she has a point or that she's right or anything. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that I can I can see where she, you know, where she's coming from with it. like she has a general idea and 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 she kind of. Slightly goes into it, but she doesn't go fully into it. Uh, Magatosh, when he was working with, with Feminist Frequency, she just kept talking about generals, generalistic nonsense, and, and just kept acting as if, you know, oh, well, this is what we learned. All this. It, it, it was a weird videos. I, I don't know how to describe it, but I know, but there's a definitely, there's a huge difference between a video that Magatosh worked on and a video that he didn't. There's, there's a huge difference. Uh, and, you know, and, and and that's the thing with here. He, he's acting as if like, you know, in this this movie, uh, at Harrison Jones, uh, Harrison Jones, <laughs> Harrison Ford acted this kind of way. So, uh, everyone, uh, takes every little thing that's in this movie as fact, and they act on every little thing without thinking about it. Like, and, and that and that's fucking retarded. And, and you'll see, you'll see what I mean. Hopefully, <laughs> let's continue. Record have a lot in common. They're lovable rogues who chart their own path and take what they want. They may be assertive or cocky, but in the end, they're always framed as good guys. Growing up, I watched Harrison Ford's movies dozens of times. Dozens. But going back and watching them again as an adult, I'm struck by something else they have in common. Something darker. Something I hadn't quite noticed as a kid. Or at least didn't really have the language to articulate. I don't know. I have a bad feeling about this. Yeah. If you look beyond yeah. their charisma, Deckard, Han, and Dr. Jones all treat women badly. So in this video, we're going to take a closer look at four iconic scenes from Harrison Ford's career all of which illustrate an unsettling pattern. Each is essentially framed as a seduction. And by the way, I, I, want, I want to see this, though. Uh, because it, it's also a thing that everyone does. They, they, they list the movie as an actor's movie. Like, oh, I like these Tom Cruise movies. Oh, I, you know, Tom Cruise makes, these, makes such good movies. Or, oh, Tom Hanks makes good movies. Or Harrison Ford makes good movies. Like, they keep giving credit to the actor... When in reality, the actor is just doing what's on the script, and it's really the director and the writers that, that make these lines. So, basically, all these romance things that Jonathan Magnetouch is, is going to get into has nothing to do with Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford just has the role, and he plays that role. He's not, you know, walking into the writer's room and says, Guys, we need to have this dialogue. I know what I'm doing, and, and we're doing this for my character. Like, he doesn't... I mean, yeah, there there is some feedback that the actors do put in, sure, but, you know, I'm sure if the actor says something that's going to contradict the story, they're not going to, they're not going to, no one's going to listen to them. I mean, if it's something that's like, oh, you know, I, I think we should have this improv in, and the director likes it, he's going to add it in, but these romance scenes don't come up as Harrison Ford demanded these romance scenes in there, or whatever, but we'll get it, but let's see what, what, uh, Jonathan Magnus has to say about these scenes. And plays out a similar dynamic. The dynamic of Predator and Prey. Predator and Prey. 
most critics agree that Empire Strikes Back is the best of the original Star Wars. Um, films. uh, the film ex- takes a darker. Excuse me. Return of the Jedi is fucking better. Uh, when I was a kid, when I saw A New Hope, okay, good movie, interesting. Empire Strikes Back. I don't remember Empire Strikes Back. I remember when I first saw it, I was bored out of my mind. I don't know if if that I'll have the same opinion now. I I do kind of want to watch it again to get a, a different opinion to see if I'd like it more or less. But I remember loving Return of the Jedi. I still remember loving that that movie. That movie was my favorite fucking movie. Uh, that one is my favorite Star Wars movie, hands down. Return of the Jedi, best movie. Uh, end of discussion. Tone and focuses more on its character development, flushing out the relationship between Han Solo and Princess Leia. Now keep in mind that Han and Leia have had no romantic relationship up until this point. In fact, their interactions have been tense, to say the least. Let go. Shh. Let go, please. Tense, um, uh, it could also be romantic tension. Whatever. Don't get excited. Captain, being held by you isn't quite enough to get me excited. Sorry, sweetheart. I ain't got time for anything else. I'd like to focus on one Okay, see, I want to say this as well. I want to say this. If Dom and Magatosh took that scene and focused on that scene, then this scene that's, that he's going to talk about, he might have had a, be- a more of a point because that was kind of uh, creepy of like him just holding her and then he's like, let go. And he, he's, he doesn't say anything. He says, let go, please. And then he just keeps holding on to her. That, that's kind of creepy. It's kind of creepy, but at the same time, in real life, no one's going to do that unless you're a rapist. In a way, I mean, I'm not saying a rapist, but like, you're not gonna see you're not gonna see a lot of people do that. Uh, you know, usually when, when people do that, they either get a slap to the face or you know, no one hangs out with them. I, I don't know. I'm just saying. In particular, a scene that's often cited as one of the most romantic in cinematic history. Let's count the number of times uh, I don't that remember anyone talking about this directly scene, or indirectly indicates that she's not interested in Han's advances. Hey, your worship, I'm only trying to help. Would you please stop calling me that? Sure, Leia. Oh, you make it so difficult sometimes. I do, I really do. You could be a little nicer, though. Come on, admit it, sometimes you think I'm all right. Occasionally, maybe, when you aren't acting like a scoundrel. Scoundrel? She backs away so he can get into the room. Because obviously he wants to get in the room. You know, like, what is she going to do, not move back? She backs away so he can get in. I like the sound of that. Stop that. Stop what? Stop that. My hands are dirty. My hands are dirty, too. What are you afraid of? Afraid? You're trembling. I like how he's like saying, "Oh, see, she said stop that," but like she's he's not looking at the context. She's saying, "Stop rubbing my hands." The hands are off the screen, so I'm assuming he let go. Let's 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 go back for a bit. Look. Dirty. My hands are dirty too. What are you afraid of? Afraid. You're trembling. I'm not trembling. You like me because I'm a scoundrel. Learn of scoundrels in your life. I happen to like nice men. Nice men. Very nice. But like again, again, um, Jonathan, you're not looking. You, you can't read people. Then I guess because she, if she, again, if she didn't want any of this to happen, it's called it's called the you know no little self defense. Just saying, I mean, women, if you're watching this video, which I know you are, uh, if I were to come up to you and be like, oh, you like, you know, get, start leaning closer and closer, and you really don't want anything to do with me, are you gonna just, they're like, or are you gonna fucking slap my, slap me? You're probably gonna slap me and back and, you know, push me off and say, oh my god, you're a fucking asshole, then leave. That's probably what you're gonna do. Um, so, Jonathan, Trust me, trust me when I say this, if any man 
oversteps his bounds and does something that a woman generally doesn't want to be a part of, they're gonna get violence. They're gonna if if no doesn't cut it, they're gonna get fucking violent. Because um you you kind of have self defense, you know. You you know you're not gonna let shit happen to you. You're gonna like push back. Uh, if the person you're pushing back fights back, then it, it, it gets it gets very you know rapey, you know. Like you know you, you if if that if you know all that kind of shit. Again, you you, you gotta understand people, John. You, you can't just say, well, see, uh, here in this scene. Uh, Harrison Ford raped her because uh, she says no and he continues. But Leia never slaps him. Doesn't do anything to prevent it from happening. She just kind of stands there. Um, in a way, in a way, Jonathan Magtosh thinks very less of women if he thinks that women are this, are, are this, are not, I can't defend themselves if he's this fucking dumb. I'm sorry, but I, I really can't imagine a woman just allowing a random guy that she that she doesn't like play a kiss on her without any resistance. That 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 is that is that would be fucking weird to see that. That that, that is just kind of like you have to be watching a porno to think that then, I guess. I, I don't know. It's just in real life this shit wouldn't fly. If this is real life, if Leah generally did not have any feelings for for Han Solo, she she would have slapped his ass, not his ass, but slapped him, pushed him back, and never want to be next to him ever again or whatever, something like that, something in the, in that ballpark. She would find some way to defend herself because I assume that like most human beings, they they want to defend themselves against a predator type person. Jonathan, Mac Jonathan, if someone's gonna rape you, Jonathan. Are you gonna are you gonna take it? Or are you gonna like try to push the person back? Sir, sir, I've isolated the reverse power flux coupling. In addition to its function in advancing the plot, this scene is sending us a whole bunch of messages about masculinity, about men, and about romance with women. The scene only lasts about a minute and a half, during which time she rebuffs his advances eight different times with both verbal and nonverbal communication, and he ignores and disregards her each time. Some because because he's he's picking up on the fucking like feelings like he's he's just sitting there because he genuinely likes her, and you know sometimes like look look you know sometimes people do do keep trying because they don't want to stop trying if they really like someone, but. If the person doesn't feel the same way, they they would be they they would kind of go more. And if no is not cutting it, you tell me what happens next. The saying will of course object to this reading of the scene. They'll point out that as viewers, we're supposed to infer that Leia, despite her repeated objections, secretly really wants it. And that therefore it's okay for Han. But she she does if she didn't fight back or do anything to stop, like she didn't push him out, she didn't slap him after he kissed her. Uh, she kind of you know didn't want to make it easy for Han Solo. You know, some people like to play hard to get. That is an actual, like, thing for people. Um, also, uh, you're, you're talking about romance in a movie with uh, laser beams and people moving things with the Force. I wanted to disregard her words. I have no doubt that that is how the scene is meant to be understood, and therein lies the problem. The troubling implication here is that when women say no, they don't really mean it. That when women say no, it's just part of some courtship game where good girls play hard to get, and that men are therefore justified in continuing to pressure them until they finally give in. In perhaps his second most famous movie role, Harrison Ford's character continues the same predatory behavior. 
Indiana Jones not only refuses to listen to women when they say no, he also uses force to get what he wants. I'm allowing you to tag along. So why don't you give your mouth a rest? Okay, doll? What do you mean, tag along? Ever since you got into my club, you haven't been able to take your eyes off me. Oh, yeah? At the end of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, leading Lady Willie Scott has clearly had enough of Indy's antics, which have put her life in danger at least a dozen times over the course of the film. So when he suggests she accompany him on another adventure, Willie rebuffs him in no uncertain terms. It's a long way to Delhi. <laughs> no thanks. No more adventures with you, Dr. Jones. Sweetheart. After all the fun we've had together. If you think I'm going to Delhi with you or any place else after all the trouble you've gotten me into, think again, Buster. I'm going up to Missouri where they never feed you snakes before ripping your heart out and lowering you into hot pits. This is not my idea of a swell time. She makes it clear that she's not interested and she walks away. But Indy doesn't listen. Excuse me, sir. I need a guide to Delhi. If you could show me the way. He forcibly prevents her from leaving, pulls her back to him, and kisses her. But look at that face she gave him. She was like smiling. And she was like, you know, you know, she was like fucking like this is that because the thing is that she probably did want to go home, and that obviously, but at the same time, they went on a they they go to adventures together. I mean, like Indiana Jones was able was able to deduce that, well, maybe she she likes to come. You know, because a lot of times people are very stubborn as well. You know, like sometimes when I came off a little, a little bad, but sometimes like if I go, if I, I don't want to go somewhere. Like if you know, so it was like, oh, let's go to New York. Ah, oh, I don't want to go to New York. Then I go to New York anyway. And I'm like, oh wow, this is actually a good time. I'm glad I went. You know, uh, Indiana Jones just wants her to tag along because she he likes her, likes her her uh, company. You know, like. If she really didn't want to come along, he probably would have let her let her stay somewhere. But like she is probably able to take care of herself. I I don't know. I I, I haven't seen a lot of Indiana Jones movies, so I can't really say. I guess it's important to note here that Willie is written to have a positive response to Indy's aggressive behavior. Her reaction reinforces the myth that women secretly want it, even and especially when they explicitly say no. The scene also contains another regressive message, one about women's anger, but we'll get back to that in a moment. Let's skip ahead to a scene in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Just like in Temple of Doom, Indy and Elsa have not had a romantic relationship up until this point. Knock it off. You're not mad. No. No, you like the way I do things. It's lucky I don't do things the same way. You'd still be standing at the Venice Pier. Look, what do you think is going on here? Since I met you, I've nearly been incinerated, drowned, shot at, and chopped into fish bait. We're caught in the middle of something sinister here. My guess is Dad found out more than he was looking for. And until I'm sure, I'm going to continue to do things the way I think they should be done. <laughs> How dare you kiss me? And here's where the narrative begins to reinforce more of those dangerous ideas about courtship. If that had been the end of it, it could have served as a lesson in what men should not do. Alas, Elsa is written to reaffirm the same dangerous myths that we've been talking about in all the scenes so far. Leave me alone. I don't like fast women. And I hate arrogant men. The idea that women secretly want men to force themselves on them. These two scenes are played as humorous. But again, but like the, the thing is, is that, the other thing is that some women do, not, not all, not all, they're, everyone has their own likes and dislikes and all of that kind of stuff. We're, we're, we're a land of variety. We have a lot of diverse uh, likes and dislikes. Some, some women might like us, some women don't. Uh, again, he, he's saying how, well, this movie, they wrote women this way. See, women like it this way. That's what the movie's teaching kids. But no one, like, I'm sure a kid who's watching this, why isn't sitting there like, I'm gonna fucking 
force women to, to just come with me everywhere. Like, no. No. No, no, no. That's not gonna happen in real life. If you take these scenes and apply it to every single, like, encounter with men and women, like, everywhere, it wouldn't fly with everyone. Um, and at the same time, it's, it's, it's just... This is what I mean. He he thinks that women are not capable of self-defense, thinking for themselves. Like, if a woman were to see a man who is forcing himself onto them and doing all this kind of stuff, do you, they're probably not going to like it. They're probably going to, like, you know, f uh, fight him off. You know, like, when, when women go to the bar, they usually go in a group. Usually, because, you know, like, if something goes goes down, they have a whole group to back them up. Uh, that's why self-defense is, is important. You, you need to be able to defend yourself. You never know what's going to happen. Everyone should be able to defend themselves. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a firm believer of that. Self-defense is pretty important, if you ask, if you ask me. Um, and, and this is the issue I had with this, with this video, with, with this video the most, and with John McIntosh in general, is that he thinks that men are ultimately evil, and he thinks that all oh, men are getting all the wrong messages, and they're out to do all these terrible things to women. But he doesn't think that maybe a woman is capable to, to handle that. You know, like, it's, it's... Yeah, not every woman may not be as, as, uh, as, as strong or as capable, sure, but... You know, you're, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go in John McIntosh mode and assume that all women are this way, or all women are like this, or all men are like that. Th that that's just fucking dumb. You're not gonna solve the issue. Um, and again, no one who watches these movies are gonna sit there and be like, this is how I'm gonna react in real life. The, these are fantasy movies that, that are just for you to leave the real reality. We understand that, you know, not that Indiana Jones isn't a perfect man. He has, he has flaws, that's what makes him relatable. Um, and sympathetic. If no, I, I'm I'm willing to challenge people to, to ask to see. Did anyone does anyone think that forcing themselves in the way that these that these scenes are are showing Harrison Ford in these movies? Are you gonna be Are you gonna do this to to women you see at a bar? Are you gonna do this? To, I'm sure if you ask a lot of men, they're gonna say no because. You know, it's more important to teach respect in school than it is in a movie. Because a movie is fake fantasy. This isn't our true story. This isn't... You know, these aren't real events. No one goes to Indiana Jones for an educational uh, movie. They Yeah, they do teach some ethics and morals, but that's, like, not really the point of Indiana Jones. The point of Indiana Jones is going on these grand epic adventures and seeing ancient civilizations and treasure and, you know, like, Indiana Jones gets all the girls and all this stuff, but that's fucking fantasy. It, it, it's not real. But whatever, I mean, let's continue. Still reinforce another pernicious idea. The idea that women's anger isn't real. That women's anger is instead an invitation to men to continue their advances. Okay. Okay, man. When a woman is angry at you, and, and she's fucking pissed at you, let's say you, you did something and she's angry at you, are you gonna try to uh, have sex with them when they're fucking angry? You know, are, are you gonna try to force yourself onto them if they're angry at you? Probably not. You're probably not gonna take it as an invitation. You know, like, like you're probably gonna be like, well, she's mad, you know, like, and deal with it, you know, whatever, but like, you're not gonna like... <laughs> fucking Macintosh, man. For most of my life, I said that Blade Runner was my favorite film of all time. I don't say that anymore. Yeah. Ridley Scott's 1982 masterpiece includes perhaps the most disturbing of Harrison Ford's so-called romance scenes. The film frames a violent sexual assault committed by its protagonist as a form of seduction. First, a little context. Rick Deckard has just informed Rachel that her memories are fake and that she's not a human being as she previously believed, but a machine. Keep in mind that it's Deckard's job to kill androids, androids like Rachel. 
Deckard is drunk, and Rachel is distraught. And he takes advantage of this vulnerable moment to kiss her. When she doesn't respond to his advances, he moves in again. Moves in she again. backs away, gets up, grabs her coat, and quickly heads for the door. But like all the scenes we've looked at so far, our hero refuses to take no for an answer. Here's where it crosses the line into sexual assault. Now guys, this is great. Deckard responds to rejection by getting angry and turning violent. He punches the door closed, grabs her, shoves her against the window, pins her there, and then forces a kiss on her as tender music starts playing to indicate to the audience that we are now supposed to find all of this seductive. The implicit threat of violence weighs on everything in this. But she's a robot though, I thought. But whatever. Scene. You kiss me? The scene includes many of the same dangerous messages we saw in previous examples. Again, we see the myth that women secretly want it. And again, the myth that women will respond positively to male aggression. Because clearly, when you're watching these movies, you're going to think that all women are the same. You're not going to sit there and be like, oh, you know, maybe, maybe there's some that don't, you know, like... Maybe if, if uh, you know, you should really, like, if you're really concerned that your kid is going to go up to be a rapist or something, maybe you should teach them the importance of respect. It's really not the movie's responsibility to teach your kids um, values. It's, it's really the parents. And, you know, in a way, some schools as well, you know, whatever. I, I don't know why Jonathan McIntosh thinks that that schools should be uh it's not schools movies should be held responsible for for rape. Rape is a very serious thing, and you know it's it's very serious. Are is really blaming movies gonna stop it? No, the way to stop it is to make sure that people understand what no means no and how to. You know, to respect that—that that was that's like the one of the things you learn in fucking school. Uh, I mean, and honestly, I think the only thing that 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 is more important than movies is just news and and how the and how like rape cases usually work out because it, that that stuff is a little bit more influential than movies because that's real life. Like when a rapist can get away with being a rapist, that that's a bad sign. Uh, you know, in, in some in some rape cases, that does happen. Sure, I'm not saying all rape cases, but, you know, that might be the case for some. That is more important to, to look at than what Harrison Ford is doing in a movie. But that's that's what I'm saying. I, th I think news, society, and, and that stuff is a little bit more important to focus on than movies. Uh, you know, people should understand the difference between, between a movie and real life. Like... Yeah, if this happened in real life, do you think it's going to fly? Do you think that, that you know, the... No. No. No, no, no. Like, come on. It's all here. But there's something else going on as well. We see Deckard employing the tactics of a serial abuser. To understand what I mean, let's rewind and watch part of that scene again. While pinning Rachel against the window, Deckard orders her to kiss him. You kiss me? When she tries to protest, he doesn't listen. I can't rely on you. Say you kiss me. And commands her to ask for it. Kiss me. Just so we're all clear on what's happening here, Deckard is forcing Rachel to give him consent under the threat of violence after physically attacking her and trapping her in his apartment. I want to. I want to. What Deckard is doing is shifting the blame and the culpability for this assault away from himself and onto Rachel. He's forcing her to make the assault her fault. 
He's forcing her to literally ask for it. This is a particularly insidious form of emotional manipulation that's commonly used by men who commit domestic violence. Blade Runner is about a man in crisis, a man uncertain about his job, his place in the world, and his own humanity. But instead of facing that internal struggle, Deckard reasserts his own power by exerting power over women, especially Rachel. In many ways, Harrison Ford represents the paragon of all-American Hollywood manhood. Throughout the 80s and 90s, he was an almost unparalleled cinematic role model. His movies offered us lessons in how to be a man, how to be a good guy, how to be a hero. Yeah, but like no one's going to take fucking romantic advice from Indiana Jones. I mean, like he's a guy that fights for, you know, what's right. He does all these like, you know, just crusades, whatever. Like Indiana Jones, I th I I need to see these movies in my opinion. But like this in general, like Han Solo, for example, he he is a cocky asshole. You know, he is, but at the same time though like he's he is kind of cool, he is kind of suave. I mean, not suave, but he's kind of cool and, and like, whatever. But no one's going to sit there and be like, oh, man, I'm going to act just like him to the T. Come on. You must understand, when you take a scene out of context in a movie and apply it to real life, it's not going to fucking go, like, swimmingly. I mean, come on. The only way it can go swimmingly is if the person you're involved with knows you and, and is, like, you know, already in a relationship with her. But, like, you know, whatever. But, like... You're not going to do it to a random girl you meet for the first time. You're not going to, like, you know, it's, it's, it's whatever. I don't know. It's, it's... But they also taught us that yeah, aggressive sexual behavior is something that women admire and that young men and boys should emulate. No. The tactics of invading whatever. a woman's personal space, aggressively propositioning her multiple times, and putting her in the very uncomfortable position of having to reject you. These are strategies that are right out of a pickup artist playbook. It's the predatory worldview that's at the heart of what's often referred to as rape culture. Rape Films culture, that confuse yeah, coercion or abuse for seduction are, of course, not limited to just Harrison Ford's filmography. The conventions of predatory manhood are part of a long running Hollywood tradition in popular movies, television shows, and music. <laughs> in the three decades since the release of Blade Runner, very oh, little Spectre has changed in terms movie. of Hollywood Spectre manhood. sucks, to be honest. Take Terrible this movie. scene from Spectre, the most recent James Bond film, which was released in 2015. Terrible movie. You killed him. Terrible. Didn't you? My husband. He was an assassin. Trust me, he won't take it personally. You signed my death warrant. The movement and blocking in this scene tells the whole story. And it's a familiar one. Notice that Bond is always advancing on her, and she is always backing away. Well, I can tell you that I don't trust you. Well, then you have impeccable instincts. James Bond is in the role of the predator slowly stalking and then trapping his prey. The implicit threat of Bond's violence permeates everything in this interaction, as it does with Deckard and Blade Runner. Bond. James. Bond. Again, we see the aggressive nature of this scene framed by the film as a form of seduction. The film is telling us that men don't need to listen to women, yeah, that's 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 what it got from that because obviously she was clearly defending herself, saying no multiple times. Uh, you know, no woman is gonna be pressured to not use violence if if no is not cutting it. I'm just saying. I mean, I mean, sorry, Jonathan Mack, I I kind of have have the this assumption, the silly assumption that women are capable of defending themselves and that they are, you know, not idiots. Um, 
You know, I do respect their personal space. I respect, I, I, I respect all that shit. Obviously, I'm not gonna be like, oh, let me tell you. But to assume that women are just gonna let it happen is really kind of, kind of uh, insulting, uh, in my opinion. You, you know, like, like, yeah, be it that you that you can maybe make the case what he's trying to say, uh, and I think there is. You know, to a degree, he's right about what he's about these examples. But the thing is that he's this, not thinking about is that these are scenes from a movie. People don't look at a movie and then say, "This is how I'm going to react in real life." I mean, that's just that they should take what they want aggressively if necessary. That once backed into a corner, once coerced, women will finally admit that they secretly wanted it all along, even if they said no. As the movies we just looked at illustrate, men in our culture are socialized to believe that it's acceptable to pressure or coerce women. When women say no, Han Solo, Indiana Jones, and Rick Deckard don't hear them. They, like too many men in our culture, instead hear, not yet, or keep trying. Too many men. Despite the lessons of Hollywood-style masculinity, when women indicate that they're not interested in something, that is never an indication to keep trying. The absence of a hard no, or even a very reluctant yes, is not enough. Because if that's all that's required... But they never said no. In any of these scenes, have you noticed that, that not one of them said no? Like, it's a, no, get away, I don't, I don't like you like that, no! No. No. They, they've said, uh, like, you know, get out of here. Uh, stop that. Uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Like, they, they, I mean, those are all denials. I'm not saying that, oh, these are, like, green lights guys. But they didn't really give uh, Harrison Ford a hard no. They didn't say, get out of here. Oh, my God. They, they didn't scream. They didn't protest. They didn't get violent towards him. Uh, because, again... I don't think women are defenseless beings that, that can't fight for themselves. Just, just saying, I mean, isn't that why they have pepper, isn't that why we made pepper spray to begin with? Isn't that why we learn, uh, why there's like classes when you go to like, when you go to my gym that I work out in, they have like self-defense classes, they have like but, uh, beatboxing, a lot of people do that because uh, it allows them to defend themselves. Uh, you know, some people carry whistles, all these things that, to, to defend themselves. John, women can defend themselves very well. They're not little delicate little flowers that, that they're just like, oh, I don't know what to do. And then, and then you know, no, no. Uh, a lot of bad shit happens. I'm not saying that, you know, oh, Rape doesn't happen. That that's a dumbass. That's a dumb statement. But I don't think rape happens because it's in movies. Just just putting that out there. It has to do with the person that they're that you know how they grew up and all that kind of stuff. And honestly, I would probably say, uh, you know, a lot of these like rapists I could see being rapists are people who feel entitled, people who come from a, like a, like you know who are spoiled who's from a spoiled family, and they think that, that, they, that they can get everything they want. You know, usually that kind of stuff. I mean, there, there might be uh, variations or exceptions to that um, uh, thing, to that thing I just said, but uh, to that personality uh, trait that, a lot of, that some rapists might have. But I would not sit there and be like, it's because he watched Indiana Jones. Oh my god, guys. Like, that, that's fucking insane. Like, it's... So, should a woman, when they hang out with a guy, look at their movie collection, be like, he watched Indiana Jones? Oh my god, I better be careful now, guys. He watches fucking Indiana Jones. It opens up the door for forms of coercion and manipulation. Yeah, and it should go without saying that coercion and manipulation have absolutely no place in romantic or sexual relationships. What we should be looking for instead is an enthusiastic yes. Okay. Oh, a fucking Here frozen. Oh. The affirmative or enthusiastic model of consent 
encourages open, proactive communication, mutual excitement, and respect. Do you like it? Like it? I love it! <laughs> I could kiss you! I could. I mean, I'd like to. I May I? We me? I mean... Yeah! Yeah, guys should be just like this. Be like, this... Emo oh, like, relate like awkward and like... Dude, dude, that, that sounds even a little bit... That sounds a little creepy. Think about it. Like, you, you go out with, with someone and they're like, I, 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 would, like, I would like to kiss you. I'll... Oh, man. I, 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 I would. I, I, you know, what if, like, she is a, a, a very, like, manipulative person and, you know, after hearing that, she's like, oh, oh yeah, fuck you, or whatever says something. You know, like, I don't know. Like, like, to me, it's a little... Creepy when someone is like, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't kiss you, kiss you. Like, it, it just feels like that if you, like, piss him off, he's gonna, you know, snap. But whatever, let's, let's continue. Do we, wait, what? We may. The fuck Frozen? That, sh that movie sucks. If you'd like to see more videos related to media and Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, look at these supporters. Oh, man, let's see if there's no one. Oh, man. <laughs> no one <laughs> oh man not even uh his best friends uh, support him okay that's it for that video i hope you liked it um again uh jonathan magnard is a fucking idiot he he doesn't respect humans he doesn't like he, he's very uh uh socially challenged i should say he watches the steven he, he watches steven universe and thinks it's like the most intricate thought think thought provoking show. Uh, so that that should tell you what kind of person he is. Um, again, I I really uh, the, the thing I don't like about Jonathan McIntosh, as I said, is that he really generalizes the issues that that people have uh, in society. Like he thinks that oh, it's because of misogyny is why men are like this. Oh, it's because of Indiana Jones is why men usually become, like, rapists or whatever. It enforces their... Th if you watch a movie to validate your fucking worldview, then you're a pretty weak individual. Uh, movies can be thought-provoking, they can be, like, you know, whatever, but you're not gonna go to a movie and sit there and be like, yes, yeah, since uh, since Indiana Jones can do this, I can do it too. Like, like that, that makes... No, no one's gonna think like that. Um, because usually, if no, when a woman gives you a no, and you don't listen, you're gonna, you know, get slapped, get, you know, whatever. Shit's gonna happen, and I don't think, you know, it's gonna be pretty if you're gonna keep doing that, and uh, that's why we also have law enforcement. So, again, our, you know, as a reminder, respect people, no means no, and, uh, You're not dumb. Jonathan McIntosh thinks you're dumb. I don't think you're dumb. I think you're all smart people. See you guys in the next one.